Well, good afternoon. Uh, thank you for coming. I am attorney Mawali Davis of the Davis Bozeman Law Firm. Uh, the family of Eric E.J. Shepard has retained our law office to represent him. Currently, Mr. Shepard uh, is in hiding, in fear for his life, in fear for his safety, afraid both of the threats that he has received from um, what we believe are the real terrorists, as well as um, him being labeled armed and dangerous. And so we are here as a law firm with other members of the legal community, as well as other members of the community to speak directly to Eric and let him know that he has legal representation and community support and that we will protect him. We will ensure that his due process um, is adhered to and that he will be represented uh, with all the, the power, will, and might that we have uh, as a law firm and as a legal community. And so there are a number of organizations that are here that want to speak directly to Eric to encourage him and to make sure that he understands that he has the community support that he needs in order to start the process of turning himself in and then going through the, the process, the legal process. With that, um, I first want to introduce uh, from the Nation of Islam, um, Minister Sharif. Minister Sharif is the Southeastern uh, Regional Representative of the Nation of Islam and has um, come here today with members of the Nation of Islam to make very clear that his security, his safety is paramount and will uh, not be forsaken and that they will ensure that he is safe. We know that there have been a number, unfortunately, of African-American men who have died at the hands of police in transport that have died in custody and they're here to ensure that that is not the case with Eric Shepard. And so with that, I uh, would introduce Minister Sharif. Thank you. Bismillah Rahman Rahim. We want Brother Eric to know that the Nation of Islam stands with him. We support him. And we want the community to know that we stand with Brother Eric. And we love our brother. So we ask him, brother, to do the right thing. And we stand with him and we love him. Peace. Assalamualaikum. We have also, um, obviously, this incident stems from Valdosta and um, Kendrick Johnson's case has been one of the things that Eric has worked on uh, diligently in supporting that family. And so um, the spokesperson for uh, Kendrick Johnson's family, Marcus Coleman, from Saving Ourselves. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. First, I want to say we stand in solidarity with Baltimore and the countless cities around the country and our global comrades in the seek for justice. Black lives matter. I want to make it understood on why it's necessary for the Davis and Bozeman Law Firm to represent Brother Eric. Having been on the ground in Valdosta, the climate down there has a serious racial undertone. After the demonstration that Brother Eric was responsible for, there was a counter demonstration. It was called Flags Over Valdosta, or Flags Over Valdosta State. It was at least 500 people that stormed Valdosta. But what people don't know is that several members of the Ku Klux Klan were also involved in that rally. What people don't know is that there were several vigilantes in that rally that were actually doing a manhunt for Brother Eric. So we want to make sure, as what's been reiterated over and over again, that his safety is first and foremost. On behalf of the Johnson family, I'll mention this. At 3 o'clock today, the Johnson family are meeting with Chief Childress. They are meeting with Chief Childress because we are returning to Valdosta on May 23rd at 8 a.m. for a commemoration celebration for Kendrick Johnson. So for all of the soldiers across the country, continue to unite, continue to unite, continue to unite in a safe transition for Brother Eric. Thank you. Thank you. From the Malcolm X Grassroots Movement, uh, Sister Angie. 
On behalf of the Malcolm X Grassroots Movement, we want Eric to know that we support you, we are here for you, and we are in this for the long haul with you. Thank you. Brother Daruba bin Wahad from the National Coalition to Combat Police Terrorism. Uh, first of all, I would like the media to know that um, the National Coalition to Combat Police Terrorism is 100% behind this law firm and behind this brother. And that we will try to mobilize people in the community around this case because the issue in this case is the validity and the moral value of Americanism and jingoistic nationalism. The white mob that came after this brother were talking about making the burning of the flag a crime. Already today, we know from Facebook, the recent Facebook arrest, that just to think about our reality is now criminal. So we support um, the brother. We ask that he realize that he has the support of the community and on May 11th, we will be holding a town hall meeting right here in Atlanta to talk about decentralization of police and public safety, to talk about legislation, to curb um, uh, uh, police violence and terrorism in this country, and also to talk about how do we deal with the police unions in the state of Georgia. So again, our solidarity is with this brother and with all of the people who are in the streets all across this country protesting police brutality, police terrorism, and white supremacy we stand in solidarity with you, and we want you to know on May 11th, we have a town hall meeting right here in Atlanta to address those issues. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, from the National Action Network, Sister Helen. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. On behalf of the National Action Network, the Atlanta chapter, we want to let the family know that we support and we stand behind the David Bozeman Law Firm, as well as Brother Eric. Again, the National uh, Atlanta Chapter of the National Action Network, we support you 100%. Brother Kalanji from the FTP Movement. <clears throat> Just want to say that we definitely support uh, Brother Eric Shepard 150%. We think that um, his freedom of speech was up to par, and we think that um, uh, the fact that he was brave enough to say what is on many uh, African brothers and sisters around this country to say exactly what's on their mind. We salute that. And we think that he has a right to his First Amendment. And we also believe that uh, no one should feel threatened, you know, uh, to, to speak what is on their mind. And we stand by him and, um, you know, FTP movement is with you. Good afternoon. I'm 17 soldier, uh, free range activist and supporter of uh, Eric uh, Shepard. The main thing that I would like to understand and let, let the world know that Eric Shepard is a valuable young man. He's a straight-A student. He has a double major in, uh, in what he's studying in school right now. He, he's pretty much a, a coach and a mentor, and what you're trying to paint him as is some sort of domestic terrorist or vigilante is not what he is. He's a, a valued asset to our, to, our, to our community here in Atlanta, as well as my doctor, and I'd appreciate if we can get the right image uh, presented for him so everyone knows that he's not armed and dangerous. He's uh, a friend, a family member, someone's son, someone's grandson, and we would like him return safely. Are there any other organizations that are present that uh, stand in solidarity with uh, Eric and would like to make sure that he is aware of the support from the Black Law Students Association, Ms. Tatiana Lima? On behalf of the Black Law Student Association, to Eric and his family, we stand and support your right to speak out against injustice, and we also commit to conducting any legal research that's necessary to help with your legal representation. Any other organization present um, that would like to speak in solidarity to let Mr. Shepard know that and let Eric know that we are, we're here? With that, I just want to um, make it clear, Eric, you know what this means. We're hopeful that you are able to get safely to our law firm so that we can get you turned in safely. That is our objective. That is our sole objective, is that you are able to return here safely, that you are able to have your day in court, and that you see 
you will be surrounded and protected by a community of people who believe in your right of freedom of speech as well as your right to due process. Uh, with that, we'll take any questions. Do you guys have any idea where he is right now? No idea at all. Uh, where is, are his parents here? No, they're not. They are, they, and I will make uh, it very clear, family members are very afraid for their own safety. There have been a number of death threats that have come across Facebook, and so the family is concerned for their own safety, so we can only imagine what this 21-year-old young man is feeling and experiencing, a student. Um, as uh, Brother 17 Soldier stated, he was coaching, mentoring, uh, a double major in psychology and African American studies. He's a student activist, still learning and growing as a young person. And that should not be criminalized. And that is, uh, I believe, the position of most of the activists that are present here and why we have taken up this representation. Family member, family members have not had any contact with him. Um, everyone is. That's why this is so important. That this message go out to him wherever he is in the world, so that he knows that he will be protected. The concern is um, clearly um, because you are in the custody of law enforcement does not mean that you're safe. In fact, being in the custody of law enforcement for many African American men have resulted in their injury or death, and so. With that as a backdrop, this is what this brother is having to process and think through as he makes a, de a decision. And some may say that he's being unlawful right now, but what's unlawful is what we see happening to Freddie Gray, to Walter Scott, to all of uh, these African-American men who, when in a, during a police encounter, end up dead. And that's the, the major concern. When he was labeled armed and dangerous, that turned the complete tide of him just being able to walk in with his mother and father holding his hand. They've, he's been labeled, instead of a student activist, he has now been labeled armed and dangerous, which makes his life, uh, puts his life in jeopardy. Are police investigating the death threats of the family? We are reporting it. It's our intention to um, gather as much of that information as possible and provide it. I was contacted through our Davis Bozeman Law Facebook page, a young lady who reported it to Valdosta um, Police Department. She said she didn't receive any feedback. She heard herself um, some white students planning on physically assaulting him. She communicated that. She called the police. And as of now, we don't know what the extent of that investigation is. Um, instead, we know that they have done door-to-door -door searches looking for a student uh, who, again, voiced his First Amendment right. I don't know. It, it's only right if it's safe. That's the reality. It, it can only be right if it's safe. I would not ask anyone to turn themselves over into a situation where their life can be taken or they can be um, seriously injured. And so, unfortunately, the climate has been set, not by um, us. We're here because we're trying to counterbalance a, a, a climate that says uh, he, can, he should be taken in, in any way possible. And, and it, there is, I have yet to see a credible threat that he has made that would make him armed and dangerous. He is in the category of an armed robber. He is in the category of a murderer. He's in the category of a violent criminal. And even the charge of having a weapon in the school zone is not a violent crime. Merely having a weapon, if that was a crime, then a lot of us would be in trouble. Well, the, what the arrest warrant reads is that allegedly he has this firearm. But the underlying factor that, that we won't ignore, even though there are others that may, the underlying factor that makes Eric such a threat is his protest. That's why it, he was all over national media because of the protest. And so the weapons in, in the gun, as far as we're concerned, that's an opportunity, a way to try to remove him from the street. And that is what this community, that's what this law firm is standing firmly against. You don't feel like that gun charge is a legitimate uh, 
We don't know. We haven't been presented with any evidence. But what we do know is that he, the targeting of Eric began after he exercised his First Amendment right. That's when the vigilantes began to target him. That's when he began to have these increased encounters with law enforcement. And so we're very clear that his protest is what prompted the interest of law enforcement in, in him to begin with. And so, uh, again, we find it um, strange that the police interact with him and he's not arrested. But then some hours later, they find a book bag that they attribute to him. They find a gun that they attribute to him after they've already met with him and spoken with him. Again, we, we, we are students of history and we know that historically, unfortunately, too many African-American men have ended up in jail um, when they in fact were innocent. And so we're not going to stand here and say that the gun or the bag was Eric's. We want the opportunity for them to prove it beyond a reasonable doubt in a court of law. I look forward to meeting, I would look forward to meeting with anyone of authority in Valdosta who has the power to help facilitate this in a way that the community and Eric feels as though it's safe. Right now, what, what he's being asked to do is to turn himself in without a bond, to go to a jail where in a community that has been very clear that he is um, at the very least hated and that his life, many of the folks in that community, have some of the folks, I would say, have made some threats. And so to put himself in that jail and, and not amongst the community, again, we don't see how that, that's a safe scenario. So our hope is, is that the powers that be in Valdosta who have the authority to set a bond. And what we would envision is a bond being set that he could sign himself. He has no criminal record, no criminal history. He was a student um, and hopefully will continue to be a student where he can be escorted um, into the jail, fingerprinted, and then these fine brothers and sisters from the Nation of Islam be able to escort him back to a safe location. We, we do not intend on allowing him to be escorted by anyone but members of this community. That's, that's what the commitment is here, is that we will know his whereabouts throughout this process and he won't just disappear for any period of time without one of us being able to see him and being able to ensure his safety. That's, that's, what, that's why this is so critical. Are you able to put into words what his parents are going through right now? His parents are being tormented. They are, um, as any parent, and we represent families all the time, myself and Attorney Bozeman, where we're standing with parents who have lost their loved one and their loved one has been taken from them. And, and there is no pain like a mother having their son taken from them. And we've seen it time and time again. And so what's running through the mind of this mother is that they have labeled my baby, my child, a armed and dangerous. Yet he has threatened no one. He has assaulted no one. But we have this ongoing pattern of seeing our young people assaulted, threatened, categorized as thugs. We see all of that playing out. And so this mother is um, extremely concerned and um, being tormented by the fact that she does not have her son in a safe place. And that's, that's what's most alarming.
Well, I, I, I think that um, the reality is that the experience that Eric experienced, that I think birthed his, his, his commentary, is that an African-American man is born in America as a suspect, is born in America as a villain. And so there is nothing we can do when we walk, when I walk out of this door and when these brothers walk out of this door, we run the risk every day of being vilified by a law enforcement officer. And so the idea that he is being lifted up as a, as a hero, um, he's a bright young African-American man that's a student that is now being criminalized. Sure. And so the community is saying very clearly, um, we're lifting them up because we think that we should have more critical thinkers. The, 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 the notion, the very notion that um, when we talk about the new Jim Crow and the mass incarceration of African American men, here's an African American man that's in college. And this, and, and this process is seeking to remove him from college and to put him into prison. And so should he be a hero? I think under the conditions of oppression that many of us are experiencing, absolutely. And I, I would let, um, I know Brother 17 speak to that as well as um, any, any, any other, anyone else. Uh, I would like to address that question. First of all, perception is reality in America today. The perception managers in the United States, yourselves included, have demonized young black people, have talked about them as thugs. These are our children. Have talked about them as thugs and criminals, forgetting that the process of criminalization begins with the system. The stop and frisk gives black kids a record. Huh? Stopping people while driving and driving while black, all of this harassment criminalizes the African community. So when this brother stood up and stated the truth about the symbolism, the perception of the American flag in the African community, he was stating a point of view that was based on historical reality. The historical reality of white supremacy, slavery, racist law enforcement, police terrorism, this is real. Even the President of the United States got on the radio and the TV just the other day trying to ameliorate the situation and talk sweet to white folks, but it's real. So if this brother becomes a hero to youth in the black community, it's only because he stood up for the truth in the face of tyranny. That's the only reason. If he was standing up demonizing white people in a racist fashion, if he was telling lies, if he was preaching hate, then he shouldn't be considered a hero. But he was telling the truth. And the truth is what has you here and, and that has him as a fugitive. And I want to point out that um, I believe that attorney uh, uh, um, uh, Mauli Bozeman is also representing another victim of police murder who was at his job when he was killed. He was working at his job when he was murdered, shot in the car when he was killed. And why did the police go with a SWAT team to arrest him? Because he had on his record that he was as assaulted a police officer. He had got stopped, in fr he had got stopped for a traffic violation, from what I understand. Mm -hmm. uh, they beat him up and they charged him with assault on the police officer, okay? That was months and months before this, but the fact that that assault was on his record justified the SWAT team coming to arrest him. And the fact that this man is labeled armed and dangerous when there is no evidence whatsoever that he has a history of this tells you that the objective of law enforcement is not only to demonize this man, but also to demonize what he said. Go back and read what he said. You're the media, you were there, go see what he said. And go see what the white people from the neighborhood, from the area, who came the next day to demonstrate, see what they said. Go read what they said. And now you tell me, should he or should not be considered a hero by young black people in the community? A A student, a college student, a, a, a very bright young man, no criminal record, and he stands up and stands on the American flag and says that for African people in the United States, the American flag represents tyranny. That's true. Whether you like it or not, it's true. So I just want you to know that he is a hero. And um, for white folks, he may be a demon. Yes, sir. Well, absolutely. I mean, it's, it's, it's our understanding that during this protest that Kendrick Johnson's name was being echoed over and over again. Uh, 
the whole Black Lives Matter notion, there's been myself and many others, uh, including Mr. Eric, who was in Valdosta, that think that Kendrick Johnson's name needs to be included in this Black Lives Matter contest, or Black Lives Matter actually protests, excuse me. Uh, I'd just like to point out just one thing. It, 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 it's, it's very hypocritical. And a lot of us fought uh, against what I'm about to say. Uh, it's hypocritical that in a state that we recently passed the Guns Everywhere bill that extends your carrying purposes, our concealment uh, 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 abilities into churches, bars, and it lessened the penalty for college campuses. We had protests on the campuses of Georgia Tech when Georgia Tech students were being robbed and they wanted to be able to carry on college campuses. Now I'm not here, this is, this is Attorney uh, uh, Davis's uh, arena to determine uh, whether, or it's the state, excuse me, to determine whether he is guilty or innocent, and I'm glad Attorney Davis is on it, but let's be honest here. We are painting this man as an animal for allegedly having a weapon when our governor recently signed into law to loosen or lessen the penalty and fines for having a weapon on college campus. Very hypocritical. Kendrick Johnson is at the base of this. I'll say this in close. The counter protest that was done by the 500 plus members from the local area and surrounding areas Let's just be real here. It was done as a response and a reaction, not just to Mr. Shepard, but the city of Valdosta is sick and tired of hearing about the name Kendrick Johnson. The city of Valdosta is sick and tired of any strong individual, especially a young black brother, that wants to stand up and put Valdosta on blast for their hypocrisy and some of their lawlessness within their agencies. So I'm very glad you asked that question. And Mr. Shepard, we want you to know that on behalf of the Johnson family, we appreciate the support around Kendrick Johnson. We appreciate the support across the nation around Kendrick Johnson. But let's just be honest here, it is more than just the flag, it is agents are running rampant through the city of Valdosta, and it is the Black Lives Matter movement that has a certain part of this population uneasy. Pretty much the Eric's uh, safety is, is called in concern because let's look at it like this. We had the uh, Kendrick Johnson killed over two years ago. Uh, he, his mother worked at the school for 10 years. So it was people that he knew. It was people that he played sports with, people he ate lunch with. Some, and this happened during school hours that he was uh, found rolled up in the gym mat. And so you got to understand that if you are going to be killed by someone that you're going to school with, the people that are vigilante justice looking to see uh, Mr. Shepard's head on this, on a, on, on, in this situation, we have to understand that these are the same people that are out there right now. These are the same people who, the same department, uh, the police department, who has spent more time pursuing this young man than trying to find out exactly how Kendrick wound up in that mat. Mm -hmm. And, and that, that, when you look at the outpouring from the community, that showed a 500 strong to, to protest the fact that Mr. Shepard stood on a flag as opposed to we found a young man wrapped in a, in a gym mat two years ago. That, that, that speaks volumes of how the community at large views black lives. And when you also look at the hypocrisy of how if we speak out against injustice as opposed to just a week ago in Florida, they had a university uh, of frat people who yeah. actually urinated on a veteran, his yep. service dog, and, and as well as the flag. Yep. And, and no police were called, no one, no, no one has pursued any arrest for these, these people that perpetrate this crime. They are not being uh, villainized in the media mm -hmm. as being uh, troubled mm -hmm. students or, or anything like that. So when you look at uh, what we as black people have to face in this country, so is, you, you have to stand that our, our reluctance to trust uh, turn over one of our own when we just had Freddie Gray who was arrested for sagging pants and as soon as he gets out of the truck he's, he has a seven neck, you know? And now they're trying to paint the picture of some sort of way he injured himself on, in transport. So we have a, a, a history of, of being disrespected uh, by the law enforcement and by the community at large. So when you think about why we say black lives matter and then when you change the all lives matter, that shows that you have a fundamental disrespect and uh, don't have empathy for us, and that's why it is uh, paramount that we come together and, and show solidarity in this in this in this initiative. Yes, ma'am. My name is Ruby Sales, and I'm the founding director of the Spirit House Project, which is a national civil rights organization. And I want to make a statement: our organization has been tracking these murders, state-sanctioned murders, since 2007. Mm -hmm. So.
Thank you. We appreciate you sharing that. Um, are there any other questions? If not, we're going to uh, conclude. We don't. We don't know his whereabouts. Um, we, we are hopeful that he is safe, and uh, if he is listening, we are hoping that he will find his way um, back back here so that we can facilitate a safe a safe surrender. Yes, sir, brother. Thank you. We we want to um, we want to make it we want to make it clear. Our anyone that can help Eric, our telephone number here is 404-244-2004. Again, 404-244-2004 to call um, so that we can assist, so that we can facilitate this community standing with you, Eric. Uh, we love you. Uh, we believe in you and we will protect you. Thank you.